this is Valerie Aiello, and you're listening to Idea Diary. Thanks for coming back to my office and hanging out. All right, so we have a new song that was written 40 years ago. I don't know. But a new song is back on the top of the charts. So this is the second example of songs that were written a long time ago becoming hits once again. It's not like, you know, Michael Jackson Thriller has just been like top selling album for since it was released. This is songs that went away and came back because of something weird. So the first song that it happened to was Phil Collins in the air tonight. When the twins did a reaction to the song on their YouTube channel. And now we have a TikTok example of the skateboarding cranberry juice drinking guy. The story is, is that his car broke down. So he grabbed his skateboard out of the car and his phone, obviously, and his gigantic bottle of cranberry juice that he drinks every day. I don't know if he drinks the whole bottle every day, but... He drinks cranberry juice every day and he gets a large bottle. And he was skateboarding to Dreams by Fleetwood Mac. And that song has gone to the top of the charts again and is making tons of money. And then Mick Fleetwood did a TikTok reaction and Stevie Nicks did a TikTok reaction to the cranberry juice skateboarder guy who I guess lives in... Idaho and works at a potato farm and yeah it's another example of his video is not something you can put a number on so he basically made a a billion dollars for TikTok for Ocean Spray Cranberry Juice and for Fleetwood Mac When I say like he made the money, it's advertising on a level that is, there's no number you can put on it. It's just kind of like a magical thing that happens. And I'm hoping, again, like I was hoping Phil Collins sent the twins something like a thank you gift, which I doubt happened. But I don't know. I haven't researched that. Um, But I'm hoping Fleetwood Mac does send a thank you gift of some kind to... The sky. I doubt TikTok would send a thank you gift, but Ocean Spray Cranberry Juice did send a thank you gift. They, because he was having car trouble, they bought him a new truck and a huge amount of cranberry juice. Hopefully, he got cranberry juice for life. I don't know how, how they would work that out, but hopefully, that did happen. However, I just This goes back to my intuition, my feeling that old music is going to become popular again. Part of it is because it's kind of already known. It's really easy to share. It's really easy to talk about. It's really easy, I guess, tell your kids or your nieces and nephews about old music that you listen to. So it's kind of easier to find probably word of mouth music over music that's just totally brand new that you have to come across. The reason why that I could see happening is because there's so much content, there's so much music, there's so many music videos, there's just so much happening now that with the internet, it's just really easy to create and really easy to release. People are releasing a song a day on Spotify. We're getting a lot of music and there was that lull that I believe happened. I can't It's just my opinion, so I can't say for sure. But the lull between, I'm going to say 2007 to today, where the music, it either was too underground, there's too much music, and all the good music was too hard to find, or it's the music wasn't that good. You know, I I don't want to be the old person that's like, oh, your, your music is horrible now, because I don't feel that way. There are good songs that are being written, but when I think about the 80s and the radio stations in the 80s and the 90s and the 50s, 60s, all those times when you were listening to the radio, it was hard to not find a good song. Like It just seemed like there were hundreds of good bands. 
thousands of good songs. It wasn't like today where it was like kind of a struggle to find a band that could write a full album of 12 good songs. There's something different happening. I can't pinpoint it. I have some ideas of why the music, why the new kids couldn't write as good songs. I even feel like in my age group in the 90s and people that were making music and bands, you know, we didn't, we didn't play as professional as people did when you were in when you were in the 70s and 80s, learning how to play music, learning how to be in bands. We just, the professionalism wasn't there. We would just learn how to play well enough and book a show. So it was, I could see why music got a little bit worse through time. And it's definitely proven that our music is being dumbed down. I've seen documentaries on it. I, I don't know off the top of my head where I saw that, but there's scientific proof that our music is being dumbed down when you think of classical music to stuff today. It's clearly obvious. It's not as complicated, just in general. My main thing to encourage people is if you had a band at any point in your life, even if it was, I guess, if you were born, I don't know, if if your, if your grandparents had a band, if you're parents had a band, if you had a band in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, I think now's the time to repackage music and re-release it in some new way, in the new modern way of doing things. So making sure it's available on TikTok, making sure it's available to listen on Spotify, making sure that your distribution's all set up, re making sure that you have your ASCAP and your BMI set up correctly for your songwriting publishing and just repackage old music for a new release. And you don't have to make new music videos, although you can make maybe a visual album using YouTube. For example, if you, uh, the new Dixie Chicks album, they made a, every song has a visual element to it. So when you listen to the full album using YouTube, you know, every song has a video. They're not necessarily like full production videos. They're just kind of like artwork inside the video, similar to what you might see if you went to a karaoke place and they had a video over, you know, the video when the words are playing. It's not always like super unique or anything, but you can make a visual album using YouTube. It doesn't have to be like Beyonce's Lemonade, where it's millions of dollars, you literally could make it in a night doing something creative. I just just really want to emphasize today, if you have old music of any kind, start thinking about how you can repackage that. You know, back in the day, people would make box sets and greatest hits album. There was bands like Descendants that I think they released, you know, records before the CD kind of was big so they might have released seven inches and vinyls so they had released a a cd called two at once so it was two albums and they put them at one cd and that was a cd Uh, they released summary which was kind of a greatest hits album you know it's just a transition so when albums came out and vinyl came out you would get maybe one song on your record and singles were big, and then it turned into making a full album, and then it turned into putting everything on cassettes, and then it turned into everything on CDs, and then now it's back to everything's on a vinyl. But also we're adding in the digital singles element, singles and full albums, but I think a lot of people used maybe CD Baby to distribute their music because I think you at the time you would pay once and it would be distributed forever there was no more extra charges and then there are things like TuneCore that would just distribute your uh, record I guess for like a monthly charge I think they would do but you would keep all your royalties just things happened to where you could release music and a lot of music went out there but I feel like a lot of things might have got forgotten when, so if you're in a, if you made a CD in the 90s and you're in high school, you know, that CD might not be available on Spotify and on TikTok, whereas it, 
if you use CD Baby or something to distribute your music, it might be still available like a, as an iTunes download or something like that. I don't know. There's a lot of pitfalls to where things have gotten forgotten. And I, I guess my message for today is if you have a, an old band, old music, I think now's the time when you want to repackage that. I think things aren't being forgotten and good things that were maybe everyone has that band in their town that they just can't believe didn't become like super mega world famous because it was just so good beginning to end. Every town has a band like that. That's kind of only in the minds of the people that lived in that town. So I think now's the time to revive the music. And also, if you're feeling old and over 40 and you're thinking, I can't write music anymore, you can. It's You can be 80 years old and still write a song and record it and release it. You don't have to be, you don't have to go on tour. You don't have to be hot rock star or you don't have to be anything. You can just write a song and release it and have fun and maybe make a greatest hits digital album. You can do all sorts of things, but let's get the music back for sale because anything can happen and it's 2020 super creativity time. I think after we get over the hump of all the unknown stuff, um, I feel like great things are going to happen. I hear after the Black Plague happened and all that chaos went down, after that happened, the renaissance happened. So I'm really looking forward to what happens after everything is gone and goes away. I I just have a really good feeling that art is going to rise to the top in creativity and people are going to pay for it and it's going to be amazing. There's money to be made and you can be creative business owner and be weird and still do stuff. So anyway, that's the show for today. Thanks for listening on iTunes and Spotify or watching the show on YouTube. And I really appreciate you being here and listening to the show. Alrighty. I still don't know how to end the show, so I'm just going to play the music.